went ahead and picked up my check-in, went to check-in and got this big envelope which basically contained this document talking about the tracker that we're going to be using, which is definitely a bigger tracker than we've used in the past. Got my bib, got my ankle tracker so that it will set off the uh, gates when starting the race and going through the different checkpoints. Um, and then also got one drop bag uh, because the the 100 kilometer race, there's two races going on simultaneously. There's the 100 miles, which is called the 100 XL. And then there's the 100 kilometers called just the Rondano 100. For the 100 kilometer, there's only one drop bag. So I got the one drop bag here. It's pretty good size. Uh, so I'll be able to get everything I need to put into it. Um, maybe like a backup pair of shoes, plus all of my nutrition, uh, change of shirts. Um, that's about all I plan on putting in there. Also, the uh, the drop bag is going to be at the um, Durumbu. And uh, so we were there. That's right about the halfway point, which the cutoff time to get there is 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And that's about 40, somewhere between 40 and 45 kilometers into the race. So just about at the halfway point. So might as well uh, start off with some clothes. I'll be wearing a pretty thick long sleeve uh, shirt tomorrow. Uh, start off with, I'll probably have a very light one underneath it. And that way when it does get too hot, I can just strip off the, uh, the thicker shirt from top, store it in my uh, backpack. The uh, shorts, I'll be using the uh, shorts with like an inner liner, which is really nice. I'll be using like some uh, higher um, toe socks from Ingility. Um, these will probably go up above my uh, shins, keep them warm because it's going to be pretty cold at four o'clock in the morning. And yeah, so that's basically what I'm going to be starting off with. So in terms of the drop bag and my nutrition, um, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm starting off with uh, some bars in my pack. Uh, these are homemade. Basically, they're like oats and dates and obviously some chocolate. Um, and then I also made some uh, homemade uh, balls. Basically, these are like uh, dates. And here I have basically like an orange and uh, coconut glazed balls as well. Very similar recipe. And also for drink, in each package I have three Tailwind, uh, the cola version. I have a couple backup things, so I'll probably put some of these in here just in case. Other things I'll be putting in, uh, if it gets too hard to actually eat, I'll also have some uh, gels. But I do like the, the Morton uh, gels. So let me go ahead and show you. The six of the uncaffeinated and two, no, three of the caffeinated. So basically, I'll take, uh, if it gets too hard to eat the real food, then I'll stick to like a two to one uh, sort of ratio for the gels. I'll do for every two non-caffeinated, then I'll take one caffeinated after. So that should be good for like uh, at least three hours. So that's uh, my nutrition plan. This will be on the drop bag. And then this stuff over here in this lineup, It will basically it will mirror the same thing. I'll also have uh, gels in here as well. It's probably overkill, really. So I'll be just carrying some extra weight. But at least it's better to be safe and sorry and have some options. Uh, one thing I'm not showing here is I haven't prepared it yet. Is that I will be putting in uh, at least two, probably three, uh, sweet potato burritos. That'll be in my drop bag. Those would be basically my lunch and uh, everything else in here are just snacks in between that basically I'll be trying to eat and consume all along the way. I'll start the day off actually before I even get to the race with the Drink 360 uh, just to be on my carbs all up to speed, including my after some oatmeal for breakfast. So yeah, that's the, that's the plan. So that's the drop bag. This is what I'll be starting off with my pack, minus the um, 
sweet potato burritos. But. All right, so it's currently 2.30. I've been up since two o'clock. I've got about 15 minutes to get everything together and get the hell out of the cabin and get to the bus. So the bus will take out to the starting line. That leaves at 2.50 and then the race starts at four o'clock. So everything is pretty much uh, ready. Uh, it's my vest, gloves, uh, some initial nutrition and stuff like that. Better get that around my ankle. And uh, get my. Oh, they are open up in Most of them are in front of me. I'm going pretty slow. Breathing heavy. We're just getting started. Alright. Going pretty good. On top of the first mountain. Actually, been skirting across it for quite a while. Uh, it's just about sunrise. It's about 20 after five in the morning. Uh, yeah, over there, you can see the valley. Uh, that's the uh, where rocks go to die. But uh, so we're just coming down, or soon we'll be coming down the other side. We'll cross the river and head on over there up that mountain down the other side to the other set dead but uh up here it doesn't look too bad it's pretty rocky but it's runnable so it's pretty nice easy going here try not to trip <laughs> yeah but uh yeah you can see the sun's not up yet it's only been a week and already it's like sunrise last weekend was five o'clock or five oh four. Now it's probably like five thirty or something. The days are definitely getting shorter. All right.
where I was camping. Uh, that's where I was camping a couple weeks ago. Last second I was over there on that mountain coming down by the river and bridges down there we've made our way up here going up here to where rocks come to die Definitely the place where rocks come to die. Coming down to the intercepted. Got some track to go. This will be kilometer 15. I'm going to do it, we set for uh, trekking. Yeah. Mm. Do some tuck. Tuck, tuck. All right, we're about 25 kilometers into this thing and we are just behind Ronslottet and uh, just coming down through that valley where I had uh, camped in the tent uh, a couple weeks ago. Clouds have cleared up a little bit, allowing some sunshine through. Uh, it's warming up, so it's all good. Pretty treacherous going here and there. It's mostly rocks. I like this and smaller ones all along the path so yeah just thought I'd give you an update where we are it's about 26 kilometers in at the moment I think I said that already a quarter of the way through and uh, yeah so far so good 32 kilometers in Beautiful place. All right, now it's up and up. All right, here we come into Bjornholia. This is, uh, oh, about 38, 40 kilometers in. Cool little place. This is a, I passed through here last time. I didn't get a chance to put it on the camera though. Uh, it's really neat. And then my wife and Lisa came to sleep here one night with her friends many years ago. Hi, 
Vamos a decir hi. Vamos a hacer bra. Yes, everything's going okay. I said, yeah, good enough. Nice water. I'm gonna head up there into the stairs. Next checkpoint. All right, coming to uh, Stirumbu. This is where we get our drop bags. Nice river. So next, we are leaving the uh, aid station and heading up that mountain to the right. It's sort of a false uh, summit. We have to go off to the right there and see this uh, sort of top over there. But that's also a false summit. We have to go quite a bit farther over that. So check in maybe when we get up there. Last time I checked in, I believe, was down in the valley there, in the mountains. <clears throat> there was a, by the bridge. Then we came up, went along the edge of that mountain over there, and then uh, down into the, there's a valley in there, or like a crevice. There's a little uh, cottage or cabin down there called uh, Birnholia. And then from there we came up over the side of this mountain and then down through the trees down to Stirumbu where we just were and now we are making our way up the big mountain that I showed you from the road but uh, we're gonna have to come up here and then start heading over to the right over this other mountain on the on the south side to the right I uh, just want to show you the views from here Lots of uh, heather growing in the mountainside. Looking really good. 
Yeah. All right, so we are on top of the uh, other mountain. Coming up, some gorgeous mountains up here. Just about time to start running again. Uh, don't know, don't remember if we go around the big one right in front of us to the right or if we go to the left here. We'll see. We'll go down here and then we'll go up this mountain and then just to the in between there, I believe. We'll see. See when we get up there. We did have to go to the right of that mountain right there. So you see the mountains off in the distance. Hard to believe we started way back over there somewhere today. Uh, yeah. Now we're coming up here and going up to the right. We're going to be going up in between those mountains before we start going left and turning north. So we'll just continue going east southeast for now. And uh, I'll see if I can't put it up on a map where we are sometimes. Anyway, still pretty rocky. Makes the running hard. But that's why we're here to do hard things. Got nothing to prove to anybody. But myself, it's not about placement, first place, second place. It's about just setting goals, accomplishing those goals, doing the hard things to reach those goals. Okay, so if the other place was where big rocks go to die, this is the place where small rocks go to die. Huh, makes it hard to run on here. But, Almost to the top of the pass. See behind me is one of the guys running 100 miles, which is 162 kilometers. And uh, yeah. coming up through two mountains, just all rocks. Okay, so coming down the other side, the uh, highest peak for this race. And uh, when we get down here, we're gonna start going to the left around that other roundish mountain over there, way beyond there. But pretty vast up here, beautiful in its own right. All these rock formations are spectacular. It's so fun to be up here. Way, the cabin is way down there, the cabin for Bite the Sette. And uh, we came down that mountainside over there. I didn't take any footage of the uh, aid station. I just, I'm walking funny and uh, didn't feel like it. But we're skirting the uh, side of this mountain here. And uh, eventually, We'll be ending up going up over that rolling mountain up over there eventually. And then that's uh, 
kind of where I had coffee and stuff the other day but gorgeous here quite the scenery <clears throat> all right my voice is a little funny my breathing's a little strange my walk is a little crooked so I'm gonna uh, hang it up now for a while quick update so came around the side of that mountain went down beside that one all the way down to those lakes came around those lakes up the road now we're going up this mountain it's the same mountain I showcased on the last video with the drone footage so yeah it's going pretty good only about 30 kilometers to go. Well, that feels good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah. We give each other energy, I think. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. point. <laughs> this is a aid station, the last aid station here at the uh, ski place. Freaking awesome folks. Teach a first class. All right, like an idiot, I forgot the money shot. And when we finished the... The finish line so i'm apologizing for that but i did finish here's the metal it's actually wood but uh wow what a day beautiful day in the mountains unbelievable Ugh, can't believe it's over now i'm gonna go home swallow uh two or three or ten patterns put my legs up and uh hope i don't wake up at 3 a.m and throbbing pain like last time <laughs> uh, I just have to put my legs up on the wall and uh, that was the only comfortable position anyways uh, thanks for joining me for this uh, endeavor uh, appreciate it um, hope you enjoyed some of the footage that I had uh, to share and we'll see you on the next one bye for now <laughs>